a bit mostly, Mr. Diamond Dallas Page. What's that? Let's not sit down. God, I've been sitting down all day. My ass is getting wide. Let's stand and deliver. All right, it's a deal. I'm younger. No, I don't think so. I think I'm older than you. Yeah. So, hello. That sucked. Hello. 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 <laughs> yes, okay, well, that's, let's not, let's not, you know, it's hard enough after last night, I'm sure we're all hungover and wondering about uh, our careers <laughs> and probably trying to recover, maybe a little uh, Bloody Mary, a little tomato juice with vodka or some vitamin C. Yeah, I, I drank the beer and your beer I never get hungover on. Awesome beer. Yeah. Awesome. I won't even drink our shit. Yeah. And my favorite beer is uh, Spot and Dark Oktoberfest, but uh, it's probably something you've never heard of. Uh, yes, do you have questions? Um, oh, I'm Bill Mosley. This is Diamond Dallas Page. One of us is the former, three time former world champion, the uh, world professional wrestling. It's not me. <laughs> you know, I wrestled actually. I, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I wrestled in seventh grade. And, seventh uh, grade, huh? Yeah. What, what weight class? I don't know, like 85 pounds or something. And it was funny because I didn't have a jock strap. Uh, I wore underpants because uh, I was too embarrassed to ask my mother to go to the sporting goods store and buy me a jock strap. So uh, that was embarrassing, you know, and I got pinned and he pulled my pants up and you know, I never wrestled again. Brutal. Yeah, it was horrible. It made me the angry, crazy actor that I am today. Well, you got to use that really well. Yeah, I do. I go right there, man, right to the underpants and the wrestling. Especially when it comes to uh, Devil's Rejects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's got a question? Yeah. Uh, hi, I have a question for Dallas. Yes? Um, that's the show uh, Hogan Knows Best, of course. Um, and another one that I'm curious about, because yesterday you said you're from the Jer Jersey Shore. Of course, there's a show called Jersey Shore. I don't know if you have watched it. To be perfectly honest, I've never watched it. You know, I think it's brutal. I mean, I've seen pieces. Now, how they did that marketing in that show is amazing. I, I, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but where Snooki got punched in the face, they showed that on every single show from ET to you know what TMZ. They showed it everywhere. They never actually showed it in the show. So that's what gave it this monster hype. And where I come from on the shore, during the summer, it's just full out crazy. September first, like the whole area shuts down. It becomes normal. Sort of, sort of like Oktoberfest here. Whoa. <laughs> Spot and dark. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know to watch the show, but uh, I don't understand how it could be over. I actually like acting, like like real acting. Even though there are some good reality shows out there. You know, I, I personally I like uh, Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> I want to be on that show. Yeah. The first thing Rob Zombie said to me was, you need to be on Celebrity Apprentice. Like, you're right, can you get me on? <laughs> Next question. Come like on, don't that. be shy. We should I, be a yeah, ice, ice road truckers and most dangerous catch. I like to see men with crabs. <laughs> and uh, the ice road trucker, of course, is uh, very gritty. It's, uh, you know, reminds me of the pioneer spirit of those crazy Americans. Well, some of you in the wow. back must have a question. Some look, here, look here, here's one over okay, here. Okay, there yes. you go. Hi there. I have a question for Mr. Mosley. Yes? Uh, initially in Halloween 2, you were going to play a part of Uncle Coffins. And yes. initially you shot some footage of that. Yes. Uh, what was the reason that that, that didn't, didn't go through? Or what was uh, that, what was you know, uh, actually I had a uh, scheduling conflict. That's the official version. And uh, I was actually, uh, uh, the, the schedule changed. I shot the first day of Seymour Coffins, and that was a lot of fun. 
Uh, I just saw there's pictures on the internet of me with that makeup, and then um, I went off. There, I had about a two week break, and during that time, I was up shooting a movie in uh, Vancouver called The Tortured. I don't know if anyone has seen that. Uh, anyway, it's uh, you know I play a child molester or a killer. You know, I molest him and then kill him uh, just to uh, get their order right. And uh, yeah, I don't kill him and then molest him. I mean, what kind of guy do you think I am? That guy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but anyway, so I was I was in Vancouver uh, uh, shooting that, that movie, uh, some other some extra days on it, and uh, and the Weinstein Company uh, that produced Halloween Two changed the schedule, and so there was a conflict. So Rob ended up uh, hiring another guy to do it, uh, and um, you know that's the way it goes, man. That show does. But thanks for bringing up a painful memory. <laughs> and a question for Bill. Um, yeah. Is it true that uh, Sybil Denning taught you the German accent for your uh, Werewolf Women of the SS uh, fake trailer? No, it is not. <laughs> but I love Sybil. Uh, Sybil was really getting into the part, though, that Werewolf Women of the SS. She was a you know, Nazi, mean Nazi woman. and. Um, you know, there was a funny day where I was sitting, I was playing Dr. Von Strasse, and uh, I kind of made that accent up. Uh, you know, I based that character on a character, it was an old, uh, there's a, like a 60s American black and white movie called The Brain That Wouldn't Die. It's a woman whose uh, head is in a tray, and she's got like a bathing cap on, and she argues with her scientist fiance, and you know, and it's a crazy movie. But anyway, he has a lab assistant called Kurt, and Kurt's, um, ends up, uh, he's kind of like the Igor character in the movie, and uh, he has had some uh, unsuccessful arm transplants, so his arm is all like shriveled up, uh, but usually when, when you see a shriveled arm in the movies, it's kind of like, it's more like with your palm up, but Kurt played it, he had like, he just kind of did this, and it just looked fucked up, so uh, when it came time to play Dr. Strasser, uh, Von Strasser, excuse me, um, I really didn't have the character, and uh, Rob uh, brought me in to uh, get some uh, wardrobe. So I came in, and I kind of had the idea of, of Kurt uh, from, you know, like an homage to Brain That Wouldn't Die. So I kind of had this idea, and then, uh, and then they, you know, we sat around and just uh, added, uh, you know, they, they said, uh, what do you think he would wear? I said, well, let's start with a white lab coat, and then I want uh, black rubber gloves. And then I went kind of one of those old, like the dentist used to wear, kind of a, it was a headband with a big uh, mirror on it. So we kind of got that, and the more that, that happened, and I started to get into the accent. You know, and of course you guys know, it's a horrible accent. Uh, in fact, you know, it was funny, when Rob offered me the part, he said, uh, can you do a, a German accent? I said, well, you know, and he said, uh, can you do a bad German accent? And I said, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's how I got it. Uh, with a great, by the way, a great, uh, a great uh, countryman, one of my favorite actors, a really funny guy, Udo Kier. Oh my God, I love that guy. Uh, one question to Dallas. Um, I guess in one, uh, 2001 or 2002, you had a feud against The Undertaker, Mark Calloway. And I would like to know how was it like to, to work with him and was it a wish uh, to work with him? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no. Actually, uh, that is the one thing I wish I never did, but it did. So I uh, live with that because in wrestling, I don't want to like ruin anybody's Christmas, but it's like sort of set up. What? I know, man. As you can see, I sold like a son of a bitch. I hit him with my best punches. He shook him off, grabbed me, threw me in the corner, and I sold again. You know, but uh, it was uh, that Taker name. <laughs> and I do really like Mark a lot. And since then, he, everything would have been better knowing each other the way we do now. But with WCW coming in to the WWF after they just got bought, so it was like, who's the biggest dog in the house? 
So they were going to show like WWF's here, WCW's still down here. Hey, motherfucker, we kicked your ass for 89 weeks. <laughs> you know? So in the big picture, uh, the best thing that came out of all of it is now I'm back in you know, the WWE as far as uh, talking to me about a Legends deal, which is really cool. And uh, I just hosted the very best of Nitro, and it was their second best selling DVD in the last two and a half years. And that beat out the best of Raw 1 and 2. So, <laughs> that's positive. That's a good thing, though. Okay, no more questions that are going to bring up old pain. <laughs> Hurt our feelings. I have another question for Bill. Um, you played so many different characters. Uh, what is your uh, most favorite line you said as one of your characters? Well, I, I've had a lot of good lines, but, uh, you know, I have to just go for the old, old reliable, Lick my plate, you dog dick! Hey, can you see what we're trying to do a talk over here? Yo! Another one for Bill. Uh, you succeeded uh, Robert Ingram in uh, 2001 Maniacs and Sequel. Here's another one of those questions. Yeah, but, but it's a new pay, right? Uh, All right, yes, I'm very happy. Yes, you want me to talk about it? Uh, yes, I succeeded Robert Ingram. Um, you know, I have a picture on my iPhone of, uh, of uh, me and Robert Englund with our arms around each other, so we're good. Um, and, uh, you know, my dreams are good. He's not in them, which is good. Um, uh, but I was told that, uh, yes, yes, uh, would you, Tim Sullivan, the director, uh, ask if I would uh, be interested in playing that part. I was actually uh, uh, going to play a different character in that same movie. I was going to play the character that then Ogre played called Doc Tickles. And uh, I had talked to Tim about it and he was, he wanted me to like, you know, saw up some girls and do, you know, drill them and do horrible things. And I said, well, with a name like that, what he should do is pull, you know, open his bag and pull out like a rusty saw and a big hammer and the girl's tied down, she's frightened. And then finally I pull out a big feather and start tickling her and she's laughing and laughing. She finally laughs so hard explodes. But uh, anyway, so that, that role went to uh, Ogre when Robert Englund uh, didn't come back as Mayor Buckman. And what I did to prepare for Mayor Buckman was not so much look at Robert Englund's uh, role as um, I went on YouTube and there's an old cartoon character, a big old rooster called Foghorn Leghorn. And so I looked at a lot of cartoons. He goes, boy, I'll tell you, boy! You know, and he's like, it's a big blustery rooster with a southern accent. So that's that's who I use to play Mayor Buckman. Hi Bill, I'm back. Uh, question for yourself regarding the remake of the classic movie Night of the Living Dead uh, by Johnny. What was your memories of working with Tom Savini and your part in the movie? I, I, I loved working with Tom Savini. It was funny because when Tom, uh, Tom Savini did the makeup, of course, uh, for those of you who don't know, you're in the wrong convention. Uh, but he, uh, he is the king of splatter and uh, did all the great makeups with uh, George Romero and, you know, amazing stuff. And uh, Tom was given an opportunity to direct by George uh, for the remake of Night of the Living Dead. And, uh, and I had worked with Tom on uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And, uh, and we became pals down in Texas. And when Tom got the job to do, uh, uh, to direct Night of the Living Dead, he called me.